I'm here to tell you a story. I stand before you a man, six foot two, two legs, two arms, two eyes that work. Two eyes that work as we work towards this clean air in my lungs, no tuberculosis. A carrier of sickle cell, a carrier only. You've probably seen me scratching from eczema if you know me, but my doctors could always help me. Born in the first world, I'm healthy. But why is this? Maybe I'm just lucky. Maybe because I prayed Jesus cures the sick and the illness went away. Maybe those who get sick deserve it. Maybe they're worthless. Maybe they'll endure it. Maybe I'll ignore it. While you're popping your collar, collar is killing many children, men and women, and many more, and your clean water. Your body is a temple, and what I mean by that is like the temples of old. It's built upon the bodies of the poor, body snatchers pill-popping disaster, drugs stronger and faster, peel back the plaster, see what lies underneath, trials of the many as you wander through the aisles of the pharmacy, big pharma gives trials to the desperate to test it so you can rest slick with no trials and no trauma, free, fits in Nigeria, meningitis strikes the Trojan horse, they sneak in and test Troven, a drug meant for the EU and America. A white lie. A high price. African children might die. They'll die if we don't trial it anyway. So what if it's placebo tested and might not be medicine? Do we really have to tell them? They can just sign the form. No, they live in a small village somewhere in India. An informed consent, well, that's all a bit formal. The mass media feeding your pharmaceuticals. Alabama's got me so upset. Tuskegee. Makes me lose my rest. Experiments in untreated syphilis and death. The guinea pigs were the Negroes. I mean, come on, it's the US. Jay Sims, father of gynecology, deceiver. Experiments on black slaves, fixing fistula. No anesthesia. Bodies of blacks become cavities for medical advancement. And yet, the embargo cannot prevent the preventative measures in Cuba from Flourishing, Operation Operation Health. Guinea-Bissau, Haiti, cue the Cuban doctors. First world healthcare in the third world, back to the States, third world healthcare in the first world, united in our states of sickness, United in our states of health, divided in our wealth. Privatized healthcare, private eyesight. Advertised drugs for privatized life. The right to buy life. The right to sell fear, where whites outlive blacks by a number of years. We move to the globe, not years, but decades. In global health, Wealthy Americans set the agenda. Dollar bills, grandstanding philanthropy, polio on the low. But wait, open the gates. The foundations are shaky. Seeds are sown. Montanso and Coca-Cola investments grow and scatter GM seeds and diabetes. Malnourishment to McDonald's. Pepsi using the water, slaughtering the trees to feed the developed world's greed, pushing out to new markets. Heart disease, developing world obesity, causing chronic disease, not just infectious. Up at the top, it's incestuous, patented blockers and testers, and pills are expensive. Let's sue governments to protect antiretroviral inventions, injections. After 9-11, the US was so scared of anthrax, it threatened to breach the patent and stockpile Cipro. Hypocrisy, but they're the exceptionalism. Never mind that generics are made for a fraction of the price. One pill instead of three, a fraction of the lives saved. HIV is profitable business. No money, no cure, no remission. Talk of circumcision, but compassion in addition. Abstinate your Bible Belt missions from spreading homophobia. Below the belt, Bible, Pope, condemn, condoms, transmission. South and East Africa, listen, colonial Catholicism. Fundamentalists believe, despite the evidence, faith healers, children without medicine, in lieu of the power of Christ. Right. 
Don't deny it. South America and Zika virus. It's just more lies. An old man in Europe says some nonsense and the poor die or are born deformed. Microcephaly, tiny heads and stunted mind. Abortion illegal, contraception stigmatized. Indigenous suicide in Canada, do or die before their colonial counterparts. It's true that diabetes ravishes aboriginals in Australia. Fauna, fawn, paraphernalia, Panama, infant mortality worse, die too soon to be condemned from birth on their own stolen earth. Maternity mortality disparities are mad, you see. A woman in South Sudan is about a thousand times more likely to die at childbirth than a woman in Estonia. The AIDS crisis. Yes, blame Mbeki. Yes, blame the denialists. But denialists never hiked the prices of the pills. Shkreli is just the tip of the iceberg. It's greed that has the right to kill. I remember sitting on the train on my way to school. <laughs> Metro headline, Ebola strikes again. Open up the page, day after day, watching the headlines, what the papers say. Then I noticed something strange. How do we contain it? Could the virus move to the UK? A Scottish nurse is on the way back from Sierra Leone, but no news of those dying each day. West Africa is far away, another part of the world. Those Guinean boys and Liberian girls are not quite important enough. Keep them away so they can eat fruit bats and monkeys and play with death. Light-skinned journalists only want some information. American reporters sensationalize the torture. Now I look back, it seems strange. I know the way the US and the army to fight a plague, to contain the Africans to their fate. And then in the 95 outbreak, plant Mobutu give him aid. Thief, colonial corruption and grief. Swiss bank accounts juxtapose with disease, sleaze. Transfusion tables and recycled needles, war and Rwandan refugees. You bleed with Ebola, bleed from your orifices. You bleed as they talk about your quarantine, quarantine and disaffection. Disaffected, rejected, sanitary convention, solidified preventive measures, patients or criminals. We don't want the sickness to spread, it's difficult, so we contain them too. You want contained us in districts for blacks, you know, where sickness ran rampant and children fell flat quick. You still contain them in ghettos and townships. Your gated compound, your child sick, the doctor comes round quick. In Niger, Arriva's uranium mines provide light for Paris. Radioactive dust dispersed in the desert. The yellow cake cakes the lungs of the workers. The cancer creeps, and then you've had it. Fanon in Algeria. Patients don't trust their doctors. Why? Because they're on the other side. Would you trust your oppressor with your life? Africa drumming and dancing and voodoo. Traditional practitioners dismissed as witches. Magician, suspicion, remedies are cooked up in the kitchen. So many doctors who never listen and can only speak. You see the limbs missing from albino children, but you do not see the herbal remedies. You withhold modern medicine with your predatory theft, then demonize what the people use to heal. I'm a Negro who lives in the land where the old get pacemakers and artificial hearts. Yeah, I know that the land of the Negroes is full of children who die because there's poo in their water. The heart starts to falter. Perhaps if I was born in Norlix, Russia, I'd be deformed. Radiation breaks the skin. Life expectancy, thin birth defects, 10 times more likely than your average Russian. Uh, nickel factory pushing. Resistant TB prisons. Collapse of public health in post-Soviet states. Smallpox had its day. Stalin scars on his face. Radiation zone, alienation zone, a town of ghosts in Chernobyl. Hemophilia and the nobles. The SARS, scars, scars. SARS, China, 2002, a new disease. News blackouts, 
propaganda, cigars for the princelings, children of the government who cover up disease, then go back to fancy cars. Big business. Those tobacco companies are basically giving it out in those poor countries. You're livid. It's a joke that here it costs so much to smoke. Wake and bake, but are you woke? Taxation. I wonder, did you know that little label that says smoking's killing? It's a privilege. Not everyone is given it. The illiterate can't read a sign on a packet, so the government of Togo says, perhaps we'll use a picture. It's a shame that the same company you're giving your funds to then runs to Togo and delivers its threats of legal action when its annual turnover dwarfs Togo's GDP. Figure the rest. Many people in the third world don't even know when they smoke they're very possibly killing themselves. So the next time you read Smoking Kills, remember that you get to make a choice in your bill of health, in the supermarket, all I see is a crime scene. I mean, we won't even talk about wasted animal lives. The truth is, the uses of food that surrounds me makes me sick, not in my stomach, but my mind. The common agricultural policy is anything but common. The Europeans subsidize so they can have cheap subs and fries. Bad news for the third world, privatize, free market, structurally adjust your skeleton as you're starving while Senegalese fish become tuna for Tibbles the cat. Nibble on that. Fill up your fridge until it gets fat. Thoughts of the hungry push to the back of your mind and fill up your stomach sublime. We face four famines today. Yemen, Somalia, Northern Nigeria, South Sudan. Don't forget that if you can. Talk about regulation, children dying because of food speculation, Clinton and the Haitians, globalization, people dispersed, healthcare workers flee from the third world to the first, fly to America, fill up your purse, one less Filipino nurse, people in remission, remissions, money sent home to make sure medicine's in the kitchen, fixing up that first world salary by Fixing the ailments of those first world patients who keep mixing up your name and the name of that other colored nurse and talking about when Britain was Britain. When British people on British streets at 100% British beef, whatever that means, and British famines in colonial Bengal affecting Indian kids. British subjects, no British nutrition. British oil interests in the Biafran War, kids with quashy or core because of Britain, the distended bellies and jelly-like legs of the histories of Britain's enriching is sickening. Histories beyond what our library teaches, and beyond letting blood and applying leeches. Avicenna's canon, translated into Latin, a father of European medicine in Iran, in the land of the savage. Imhotep, architect and physician in hieroglyphics, it was written. Bladder stones healed by Hindu preachers. Lithotomy plants in the Chalaka Shatrita. Though history places Europe at the center seat. Smallpox immunization in China for millennia, see, only reaches Europe in the 18th century, and even then, you see, physicians reacted skeptically. The women in the wombs that they have soldered. Rufaida al Aslamiya and her famed days of treating fallen soldiers. Talk of the future. I see displacement. Refugee camps are the places where sickness can spread. I see sickness in your faces, though the scars have cleared. I see sickness in your races. I see sickness in your greed. I see sickness in the way you consume so others will need. I see the blood on the hands of those who never have known 
what it is to bleed. I see the blood on my hands. I see the trees. I see the bats and mosquitoes that thrive in warm climates. I see zoonotic disease. I see the earth get warmer as the sea levels ride, more children on which the malaria feeds. I see a lack of latrines. I see the sewage, the poo, the it, the open defecation into pits, the water conflict and the cholera. Yemen getting bleaker and the arm deals sold by the Brits. Snails spread schizosomatis. Surgeons enhancing peoples, while children cannot suckle, too emancipated to give milk. I see the filth upon which the world that you call developed was built. Cataracts, they cannot see, completely preventable disease. They cannot see the truth. They cannot see the flowers or the leaves. They cannot see the injustice their blindness conceals. Only some get the chance to self-deceive. Only some get the chance to self-deceive. Only those that can look get to look away. Only some get the chance to self-deceive. So that is a poem that I wrote for this, this talk. Um, I'm going to put it on a website called Rap Genius with an annotated version um, by tomorrow, hopefully, so that, because obviously with a poem like this, you have to find a balancing round between finding people in the room who obviously are medical professions and who will get little references um, and then obviously make it something accessible um, so that it's, it's obvious what you're talking about. Um, and then there'll be some people who want to kind of get the in-jokes between Russian nobility and <laughs> outbreaks in China in 2002 and the rest of it. So I'm going to put an annotated version on Rap Genius if you go on the website and then type in Femi Nylander, TED Talk, London School or something, you'll find it by tomorrow. Um, and then, yeah, <laughs> um, thank you. Much appreciated. Thank <laughs> you.